Welcome to episode 154 of Clarity Compressed, and today we're going to talk about Super Bowl 55, and what else is there to talk about right now except Super Bowl commercials? We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. All right, it has already begun. Super Bowl commercials are getting released. The very first one that was released was by a company who sells cars online. They're called Vroom. Let's watch the commercial. So, are you going to buy the car? Please. If I could just go home and discuss things with my wife. I've been here all weekend. You can leave any time you want. <laughs> Never go to a dealership again. Well, that was painless. Go to Vroom.com, buy a car, and we'll deliver it contact-free. Okay, so Vroom is... Um, a lot of you are familiar with Carvana. So Vroom is Carvana, but red instead of blue. And basically the value proposition is the same. Um, you can shop on your phone and you can buy a car digitally and they will deliver it to your house. Now, this isn't the first time a Super Bowl commercial uh, about car dealers has kind of thrown them under the bus, but, but that's okay. So this commercial obviously checks off a lot of the boxes of a good Super Bowl commercial. Number one, it's entertaining. Number two, it's got kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe I won't call it a cringe factor, but it does have a cringe factor. Like when that guy's got the jump box and he just goes to, it's cringe factor in a good way. Not like cringe the way the kids use the word these days. It's cringy, but no, it's got that shock factor. It's entertaining. Um, it's fast. It's punchy. It's well-produced. So I think for the first Super Bowl commercial out of the gate, I think Vroom did a good job as far as Super Bowl commercials go. Um you know, even even the the last part of it, where the people are sitting at home getting their car delivered, they also kind of check the box of this 2021 world where people want contactless retail. So, uh, for all those reasons, I think Vroom checks the box for, and um, we're not gonna win. It's not gonna win the best Super Bowl commercial award, but it's definitely gonna uh, check the box as that's a good Super Bowl commercial. You know, that's, they, I don't know how much they spend. Did you know Super Bowl commercials this year, I believe is around five point, like three or four million dollars just for the 30 second spot. So that means you pay $5.4 million just for the space to then place a commercial in. Then you have to pay for production. You have to pay for talent. You have to pay uh, for all that, which could be another couple million bucks. So $7 million to get that commercial in front of you and the Super Bowl now is the commercials. Remember, you had to actually watch the Super Bowl to see the Super Bowl commercials. So um, especially if you don't care about the teams that are playing in that year, you, everybody, like when the game is on, the game goes off and the commercials come on and everybody, what, what does everybody do? Oh, everybody quiet. The commercials are on. Right. So from that standpoint, Super Bowl commercials have a lot of value when it comes to the attention that they get. Because most people leave the room when a commercial comes on, but then in the Super Bowl, everybody comes to see the commercials when the commercials are on. Now, that's just exaggerated much further because now the Super Bowl commercials aren't just during the Super Bowl. Companies are releasing the Super Bowl commercials before the Super Bowl. As we saw with Vroom, um, they're getting the extra publicity of being the first one out. Now, um, then people will start comparing. They'll start ranking and rating. Actually, what a lot of other companies do is they hack the system in the sense where they don't actually buy a spot during the Super Bowl, but they release their Super Bowl commercial, and they just release it on YouTube, and they call it a Super Bowl commercial, and they get a lot of attention and time, and some of them are actually very well produced, and they put a lot of time, energy, and money into them. And then also, um, Super Bowl commercials can live on if you do a great job with your brand. The conversation can continue after the Super Bowl for awards, and then even further, I was just talking to a, a friend and mentor of mine, James Orsini, about the work that VaynerMedia did in their Super Bowl commercial uh, last year with Mr. Peanut. And if you remember, they killed off Mr. Peanut. 
And so in the New York Times, just this last week in the crossword puzzle, Mr. Peanut was one of the was one of the answers, and it said something like historic or classic character killed off in the Super Bowl in a Super Bowl commercial. So again, just the 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 brand lift and awareness that a company will get can, can be very extended if you do a good job. Super Bowl seasons among us. That's the first commercial out of the gate. I thought it'd be fun to talk about it and show you. Now let me just weigh in a little bit on the subject matter of the commercial. Right, everyone. A lot of you know that I'm heavy into the automotive industry. I know uh, a whole lot of auto dealers, some of the best people I've ever met, some of the most caring people I've ever met, some of the most generous people I've ever met. I bet if you take a car dealership in any community and you take the next five or 10 small businesses, that dealership invests in the community financially and just in service more than the next 10 or 20 businesses. It's just a fact. You know, and what Vroom is doing in this commercial is they're playing on the stereotype of what some bad actors and bad dealers have done in the past, and maybe some do today, honestly, but more than that, they add drama on top of it and they take a customer's perception and then they just crank it up to 11. Speaking, I think that that Vroom is leveraging that perception to sell cars when the reality is dealerships really have the ability to deliver a much better customer experience because I know people that have bought from Carvana and bought from Vroom and bought online, and the truth is, Issues happen when you buy a used car. They just do. Everyone wants to believe that everything's perfect, but you can buy a really high quality used car. Stuff happens and it's very difficult. I mean, Amazon has conditioned us to, when we want to send something back, print the label, slap it on the box. The UPS people will pick it up or, you know, you can drop it off at a spot. It's it's not the most convenient thing, but it's a lot easier than going back to a store. But then like items get bigger, right? A mattress, well, that sounds really fun to return, especially when I hauled the one mattress out and I have this new one and I don't really like it. Like, that doesn't sound very fun to return. Peloton has, you know, a 30-day trial period. But man, like trying to get that thing picked up and schedule it and all that, not convenient. So think of a car. You buy a car online. You've already traded your car in, so you're dehorsed. You don't have a car. And now you have this car that you're either not happy with or there's a problem with it. And the company that sold it to you, there's no real physical location. Well, they, maybe they will take care of it, but it's going to take days and time and you don't have a car. So all that to say, I think the business model or the perception that Vroom is perpetuating in this is a stereotype that isn't, in my experience, may be, the stereotype may be accurate in some dealerships. But the truth is there are thousands of amazing dealers across the country that take care of people better than any digital experience ever could. And the truth is, like, you're buying, a, you're buying a car. You're not buying some olive oil online. You're not buying some earbuds. You're buying a car with mechanical pieces and parts, and they break, and there's scratches, and things happen. Um, that's just, I guess, my two cents. And maybe I'm a little defensive because I'm in the automotive industry, and I know so many amazing people. And I've never seen a group of people get together, especially the innovative dealers. I've never seen a group of people care so much and put so much time, energy, and attention into what the customer actually wants to do and how can they deliver that experience. And and so, like I see that ad, and it's a good Super Bowl ad, objectively, I think it's going to do great for them. I think, um, you know, they are spending borrowed money. It's not a profitable company or a tech company that raised a lot of money. So, you know, they're spending borrowed money, and it's a lot easier to get, you know, leverage that spend and make a big splash, and then we'll figure it out on the other side. I mean, Carvana did the same thing. They weren't profitable forever. And now they're profitable, so they figured it out. Is Will Vroom figure it out? We'll see. But the truth is, a lot of the audio executives in that company, they actually were a part of creating the stereotype. So it's a little bit, I don't know. All that to say, we're going to have a lot more Super Bowl commercials to talk about really soon. It's really one of my favorite times in advertising because they just get, I mean, it's one of those times you can get outrageous and have a lot of fun. And um, it's just a lot of fun to be a brander in that world because Super Bowl commercials, let's be honest, they play in the world of brand. They don't play in the world of selling you a product for, you know, 1099 or 199. They, no, they want to make you feel a certain way. And if they make you feel a certain way, you'll move either closer to or further away from the brand. So uh, for a brander, for an advertiser, for a marketer, it's just, and a, and a football fan, it's a lot of fun. Even though the Eagles aren't in the Super Bowl, which means I'll get to spend that much more time paying attention to the commercials. So thank you for paying a little time and attention to this show. I hope you had a little bit of fun. I hope uh, you saw something that, that made you happy, uh, made you think a little bit deeper about what you're doing in your business and your life. Uh, until next time, I can't wait to see you. And uh, we won't have seen the Super Bowl ad soon, but I bet there'll be more Super Bowl ads that have been released. I hope you have a great week. 
Until then, pursue play. You just gotta love some.